So this case is interesting because, you know, not only do we have, again, the intersections of a lot of different cultures and identities in this research group, but um, we're dealing with that complicated space of um, group meeting, um, which brings in, you know, everyone has their own dyadic relationship with the research, research mentor, but then also their interpersonal relationships as they work together across the group and all of these things combined um, can be quite complicated. And so um, it seems like the way Andrew is showing up in some of these settings is pretty problematic. And again, it, our narrator here is in the position of having some commonality and a, and a close relationship with the PI. So what can the narrator do in, in this situation when they're observing this, this negative um, interaction in group meeting? I think one important thing for them to do is to like affirm uh, Jin's research and like, say, oh, like you can in the moment or after the fact say, actually, I think that sounds really interesting or like, you know, maybe like affirm and kind of support what they're doing and uplift it even in kind of an opposition, I guess, to what the Andrew is doing. Yeah, and, and it, uh, that's, I think, quite important because sometimes, depending on the culture, you might think, oh, this is a senior poster, for example, <laughs> yeah. that is telling me this stuff, so I'm gonna just take it. I should just take it and just be better rather than maybe you're being negative or too negative or actually you're not being nice to me, so mm -hmm. uh, things should change. So I think that is, is a good one. Yeah, I think this might also be an opportunity for, like, if this is, at least in my lab groups, we're often discussing literature, like, current literature, along with whatever research people are working on. And so I know in my discipline, there's been a lot of conversation and actually some publications recently about things like visibility of women in the field, visibility of minorities in the field, experiences of, of various conflicts around identity. And so this might be an opportunity for the postdoc to suggest, like, broadening the literature to include conversations about inclusion and that way you don't necessarily have to like whack Andrew over the head with the like you were misbehaving, but you, you know, kind of bringing in a space to have a conversation about making the whole discipline and maybe specifically how that comes through in your lab group more inclusive. Yeah, and I've, and I've heard of PIs that do kind of have these situations where they think something is wrong in the lab and they don't want to chastise someone in particular. So then they make it the next, next lab meeting I'm talking and I'm not going to do science. I'm going to talk about this general issue so that everyone is aware, feels comfortable, let's have a discussion, and uh, hopefully things can improve. And so you're, let's imagine you're the narrator. So Andrew's your benchmate. We don't know kind of how good of colleagues you are. Maybe you just work next to each other, or maybe you're actually friends. Um, do you, based on what you saw, kind of say, hey, Andrew, what was up with that? That seemed a little harsh. Or do, would, would you have any sort of intervention with your colleague kind of at the peer level? I mean, I think intervention is probably overstating Just, it. <laughs> like, you know, take them away from that space. No, but I think it's like, like you're well within your right to be like, hey, you know, take a step back. Like, remember that this is supposed to be an encouraging experience for everybody. Like, you know, we're teaching people how to participate in the scientific process. And, you know, this needs to be something where everybody feels like they're able to participate in their fullest extent. Um, so I think it's a totally appropriate conversation to have. Yeah, and it can be casual. I mean, if you are benchmates, you can actually just drop it in in a casual conversation about how much you need to pipette here or there. Mm -hmm. You can just like, hey, what did you mean when you asked this question to Sheen or you meant this comment? Like, what was your intent here? And maybe their intent wasn't to be negative. It was just the way that they think that they should communicate because probably they learned it like that. We don't know who their role models were before coming to the lab. If this current PI is not the role model, maybe someone else was. Mm -hmm. And maybe say, like, maybe that's uh, another, there, this is another way of approaching it. Just give an example. And, uh, hopefully this, this, this could, I don't know, change the mind of, uh, of Andrew. If you do have a conversation with Andrew, would you also bring it up to your PI that you chatted with them, or? I, I think I would take the organizational uh, pyramid in this case. <laughs> like, you talk to the person first, and if you see that there's a pattern there, and this person is not taking your message, then probably yes, because it's not good for the lab environment. But first, I would approach Andrew. Yeah, and I'm torn myself about talking to the PI. I, I agree. I, I think. I like the informality of the strategy because I think often when we all can feel that something feels wrong, 
that creates this barrier to address it. And so leaving it at the colleague level and rather casual could be a nice way to disrupt it without it exploding or, or being incredibly disruptive. And so involving the PI might blow it into something that it's not. But I agree with you, if there's a repeated pattern of, of first years feeling demotivated and, and criticized, then I think it could be, yeah, I, I tried to talk to him, but you know, maybe it's time that you stepped in. And hopefully the PI would have noticed. <laughs> Yes, hopefully the well we we know the PI the PI was visibly upset and I you know I think again the the advantage of the narrator here is that they have some similarities with the PI that maybe allow them to read the body language in a way that perhaps a different person in the group with a different relationship might not notice and I guess that's kind of my final question in this case study if you're a postdoc that's new to a group, or maybe you don't have an incredibly close relationship with the PI, but you do know, or you don't have a close relationship with Andrew. Maybe Andrew works in a different part of the research group, or um, where do you start? Like, if you don't have those interpersonal connections to rely on for whatever reason, does that change any of your approaches here? I think in that case, I would go straight to talking to Jin about it and just like not you know necessarily in the lab meeting but I would just so that she knows that I saw and I felt uncomfortable on her like not on her behalf but like I was also uncomfortable with the situation and that might be a way to start building those interpersonal relationships and maybe you know have somebody else to bounce off ideas about what do you think we should follow up with like do you think it's worth chatting with the PI do you think we should have a conversation with Andrew but trying to find some way to start building those relationships and, and I think, Sarah, I had totally forgotten that the PI was actually visibly upset, which kind of gives cue to maybe, I mean, we, we forget that we are never really trained to deal with these situations. Um, we do research and then suddenly we are some form of administrator to other people that want to do the same thing that we are doing. So that, I think that for me is a cue that maybe the PI doesn't necessarily have the tools to deal with it, but maybe if I come to the PI, as, as Andrew and I say, well, um, you looked uh, you looked a bit upset. Was everything okay with the interaction there? And then you start having the conversation. Maybe the PI will say like, okay, it wasn't just me because uh, you're you're seeing it too now. So maybe we should do something about it. So so there's a cue there that maybe the PI is in agreement with mm -hmm. you being upset as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes I mean I think you bring up a very fair point that. Yes, obviously we want faculty to, to approach these situations proactively and, and with leadership, but um, you know, there's not everyone has the mentoring or management training right up front. And so as postdocs, there's an opportunity to follow the cues and to share leadership. And, and so I like that approach very much.